Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the CICMQ Best Practice 11s is for today. Um, I've lost count how many we've done now, um, but it's, it's more than 10. Um, and I'm very, very happy to um, welcome on board um, Dion Whisker and Candice Marlon from Alonza, who are going to be talking about Shared Service Centre transformation, the Council Civil Transformation, the work that they've done uh, over the last year. And it is still going on, from what I understand, the conversation we've had just now. So, um, so welcome, uh, Dion. I'm going to share my screen now, and then I will hand over to you. OK, here we go and sharing my screen. So um, thanks very much for joining us, Dion, and, and, a, and a pleasure to have you on board. And thanks, thanks for taking the time out in your unbelievably busy schedule <laughs> to, to, to actually put together the deck and, and run it for us. So thanks very much. So uh, over to you, Dion. Yeah, great. Thanks very much for inviting us to present today. Um, so yeah, we just wanted to talk through the story of Lonza, the Shared Service Centre, how we started and the journey that we've taken so far. So if you can just go to the first slide. So Lonza is a business, not many people have, have heard of Lonza out in the market, which is quite surprising given the amount of work that we do. Um, so we prefer global partner in the pharmacies called biotech and nutrition markets. So um, Lonza as a business has been growing over the years, even since the five and a half years that I've been with Lonza, the amount of businesses that we've acquired and the scope of work that we've done, it, it's, it's just forever evolving. Um, so we have 15,000 employees, um, 124 years that we've been trading, over 37 global sites. Uh, Manchester SSC work with a number of these sites. Um, we have two shared service centres. Now we have one in Manchester, which is where Candice and I work. And we also have one in Costa Rica, which opened a year after the Manchester SSC site opened. Um, so if we just go to the next slide, please, Chris. So this is just a quick overview of what we do. So we have four different areas. Uh, we did have a another business as well, which was called LSI, which is Speciality Ingredients. So we've actually sold that business and that sale went through uh, last month, uh, which has been an incredible amount of work for, for the guys in the shared service centre, as you can imagine. Um, the last company that you see here CHI business so this is more of the one of the most recent businesses that we've acquired so the capsules and health ingredients so it's actually the tablets that you take so paracetamol tablets um, the uh, any vitamins that you take and you the tablets the the plastic coating that you have uh, with the with the drugs inside uh, with the different colors now it's very interesting just you know from candy now learning about the business, how it works. Um, and it's like each individual company, as an example, has their own specific color. So you would think that, you know, paracetamol are blue and white. Well, that's only specific to that actual company. Um, so obviously we make a huge amount of, of all different, you know, vitamins, all different types of, of drugs and, you know, for the for health reasons. But we now actually own the company as well that makes the capsules that the drugs go into. So, you know, the, the amount of uh, scope that Lanza has is, as I mentioned before, is forever growing. So that's just a quick overview for you. Um, so if you go to the, the next slide. So the Shared Service Centre, so who are we and how did we start? So we were established in 2016. So we look after all of the finance functions for Lonza. So that's accounts receivable, accounts payable, record to report. And we also have a uh, controls and compliance team as well. Um, so, you know, you can see here the scope of activities. So we are part of the GBSO area of the business. So we have a credit management team, accounts receivable team. Um, and then we have a program management team that we also work alongside and also operational excellence. Um, so. I started on the 1st of February, 2016. So during that time, we've had multiple acquisitions. The uh, individual finance departments from all of the different countries that worked separately, all came into the Shared Service Centre in Manchester. Now, as you can imagine, all of these different areas, they all work completely differently. So every individual business and local site had its own way of working. Um, some did collections activities, some didn't, some did credit management activities, but not the full scope. So then obviously from it all coming into the shared service center, that's when the harmonization and standardization programs um, came to life. So once it came into my control, obviously I realized, okay, as a manager, 
I can't work in this way. We've got 15, 20, 30 different ways of working across all of these different countries. And now it's all within my scope of management. Um, so that's how we built the three separate towers. So if we go to the next slide. So what I realised that we needed is we needed individual departments to take, to take care of all of these different processes. So that's how we built credit management. So Candice and I built the credit management processes from scratch. Um, we, for obviously from best practices that we had from previous businesses, we knew what the necessities were and what needed to happen. It's just how we were going to do that. We also needed a dedicated collections team and a dedicated cash and banking team. We had individuals that were doing all three processes. So a little bit of collections, um, some order releases, some of them were posting bits of um, incoming cash. Uh, we knew that wasn't going to work long term um, from, you know, SODs and the compliance aspect. We needed to have three separate towers. So that's how the standardization program came to life. So if we go to the next slide. So here's just an overview of, I'm very sorry, I know the screen prints are very small, um, but once we knew what we needed to do and we had a look at what all of the individual countries were doing, we then broke it down into like a heat map. So we had to look at, okay, um, are they doing credit management? Yes or no. Are they doing collections? Yes or no. Where you can see it's red, you know, we didn't do the processes or it wasn't in scope to do these particular areas. For example, certain countries um, may not have had the need for um, collections activities because it was only cash app postings and so forth. Um, we had a look at how many steps do they have in these individual processes? How many additional steps were needed? How easy is it going to be to bring these processes into the shared service center? Do we need extra staff to be able to, to, to control this? Are we going to be able to do the collections activities for all of these different countries in this way? Um, do we have the automation set up, yes or no? Um, items such as statements, dunning notifications. Um, do we have the IT resources to do this? So this wasn't an easy process. It's taken over two years um, to get into this state of play. I remember when we first received our accreditation um, and actually Phil, you were still in the business with us as well at the time. Um, it wasn't an easy feat. Uh, we were going through the accreditation process and I remember Sharon saying to us, you know, the amount of work that's been been put into, you know, to, to try and get to this state of play is incredible. And the, the team that I had working with me, you know, Candy specifically as well, building the, the credit management processes, it was a lot of interaction with the business, not only to say this is what needs to be done, but this is how we're going to do it. And this is... Um, how we're going to get there and this is what we need from you you know explaining the need for credit management how it protects the business and also how it sets up future business to be successful so it was a lot of communication out to our internal stakeholders um, so if you go to the next slide please so once we came out of the standardization program, we very recently done another migration. So this was the Montegio site. So we had standard processes for this site to move on to. Now, previous migrations didn't go so smoothly because we had to bring in the work as is, and then we had to split it out, and then we had to try and standardize it. Luckily, once we finished the standardization program, the very beginning of this year, and we had this new migration, we were able to lift their current way of working, move it straight onto our standard way of working and the, the, the migration, the difference and the, just the amount of time that it took was a lot shorter than the previous migration. So we can really see the benefit of doing this for the business. Um, the bad debt reports were standardized. The stakeholder engagement was there. The collections reporting, it was moved straight onto our standard way of working. The order release process, just from having that credit management structure there, we didn't have a huge amount of you know orders going on block because the data was there in the system. It was already it was ready for them to move on to. Um, so again, you know, having those simplified processes, having that structure there, and having that standardization piece in place is a huge benefit to the business, and we've seen that. Um, so then the other piece that we also work on is with the team members having the Lean Six Sigma methodology in in our way of working uh, we're constantly looking at more improvements that we can make you know 
is there any more waste in these processes? Yes, we're standardized, but as the business grows and more customers come in and more work comes into the business, what else can we do to improve the service that we're giving to our customers, not just external, but internal as well? We have program management teams, we have sales teams, we have account management teams. We're constantly striving for um, better processes, leaner processes. So if you just move on to the next slide, we now have regular reviews with our uh, operational excellence teams as well and we have things called uh, mood initiatives which is part of the lean methodology so you know these small incremental changes it makes long-term benefits for the business so dispute management as collections teams we know disputes are continuous uh, they're never going to go away especially with the the world that we live in at the moment businesses are really struggling um we've got more technology so we have a lot of portal based systems that are being introduced to businesses all over Europe and Lonza is a business we haven't really dealt with this type of um, technology before in regards to portals and customers using portals it's never been the as is way of working so the SSC finance team um, Candice is the collection supervisor at the moment you know we've been working very um, very well with the sales teams to get them to understand where we're going, how we're going to deal with these disputes, how we're going to make sure that our customers are still satisfied with the um, service that we're delivering, but also giving them what they need. Um, so we've increased the transparency. We have an amazing dashboard that we've built over the last couple of years where all of the disputes are on there. It doesn't just show overdue, it shows disputes, how long they've been there, you know, who needs to um, who needs to process it, what they need to do. And just that transparency out to the business has made a massive difference. Um, as again, we're continuously improving that. Um, credit management, we have a daily blocked order report that we use in Excel, for an example. Um, but with the long lead times that Lonza has and for the constant changes in deliveries and shipment delays because of the COVID situation, we needed to be able to have more visibility of all of these changes that was happening. So again, we've made changes to our macros that we use. So any date changes in the background, <clears throat> excuse me, the credit management team are aware of those date changes so we can react a lot quicker um, and we can make sure that obviously sh shipments aren't delayed and the customer gets what they need. Um, and finally, we have a system called Sorella, which we use for automated cash allocation. Um, but the system is only good as the information that we're receiving. So we're continuously uh, communicating with our external customers to make sure that they're processing, you know, sending in the information that we need to make sure that that system works. We're very, very keen on building on our automation, but to automate, obviously, the, the information feeding into that system needs to be correct. So accounts receivable as a team are not only trying to improve the processes, but improve the data that's coming into these systems as well so we don't just process day to day we have that lean methodology where we're always you know wanting to remove waste from processes we want to make improvements and we want to make sure that the customers have you know a great service with London not just from the products they receive but from the service they receive from us as well um, and then finally the the last slide what I did I asked my team members just for a bit of feedback on um you know, how, how it is working in the shared service center, how it is working in the accounts receivable team. Um, so I got some feedback from Candice, who is currently the collection supervisor. She was previously the senior in credit management. And what I like here is that, you know, some of the processes that we've implemented as well came from CICM as well. Um, you know, having these successes and challenges catch ups with the team. Um, week on week, the successes and the challenges that we have in business changes. So it's very, very important to have these catch ups with the team members because, again, working remotely, it's very difficult. We, if you're working in an office alongside your team members, you can see when they're frustrated. You can see when they're having a challenging day. Working remotely remotely you don't get to see that so we have these weekly catch-ups um, we listen to the feedback we then work on the challenges that we have and again with the standardization program and the continuous improvement initiatives that we have we say okay well how do we take that can we change it is it something Lonza can do is it something that it's more of a um, just a conversation that we need to have with the business so we're always you know striving to to improve our processes um, 
And then for more of a personal approach, so Angelica Langdon, who's my cash and bank supervisor, um, you know, she gave some good feedback on Lonza supporting our employees. Now, Lonza has done a, a fantastic job during the pandemic. You know, they've really been there for their employees. Um, we mentioned at the beginning of the call about remote working. Now, going forward, we are going to be working back in our office, but we're going to be doing a three days in, two days at home because they've realized that we don't need to be working in the office full time. It's actually worked very well working remotely. However, we have just acquired a new office space, which again, you know, is, is for, you know, finance reasons, obviously we don't want to shut that down. And, and also for having that team engagement, we want to work in the office, but we're now going to a three, two day approach instead. So that's longer listening to the business to say, to their employees sorry of you know what we need and what we feel is good for us to have a good work-life balance and also to have the you know the business needs as well so i think Lonzo have done a fantastic job of really engaging with their staff and making sure that they're happy um with their work-life balance um so that's it from me i don't know if anyone has any questions or any, anything else? Any yeah, I've got loads there? of questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, I'll, st I'll start with the first one. Um, so when you moved, you moved from your European centres into all, all, in, all into Manchester. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of percentage wise, um, what, what did that do in terms of your headcount by moving all of those? Did it, did overall, did it reduce it by 20% or, or, or not at all? Or how did that? Um, we actually did like for like. Um, so in right. some areas, we have managed to reduce headcount. In other areas, we've had to increase headcount. Reason mm. being, because we've gone from maybe a three-step process to a 10-step process. So credit management is a great example of that. Credit management was non-existent in some of these sites. Um, orders were put through um, with no with no prior checks. Um, contracts were signed with no prior checks because that was just the way the local site works. Um, now, once we took it over and we had a look at the overdue right. figures and we reported it properly, we showed them that, yes, you do have bad debt. You do have a huge amount of overdue. If we have an extra person to give you dedicated collections, dedicated credit management, your overdue will, will come right down. Just as an example, the Capsigel business that I spoke at the beginning of the call, when we took over, the overdue percentage was on or around 45%. Within three months of the SSC taking over, it went down to 15%. So you, right. we, we showed them the benefit. Yes, you've well, got that, an additional headcount cost. That's quite, that's quite a refreshing way of doing it because normally mm -hmm. um, when, when you're looking at these these things and moving from 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 a dis, uh, you know, distributed... Um, the distributed um, management of something like this, it goes into, it's managed by the accountants and all they tend to look at is what, what's the number that I'm going to be saving. And it's actually mm -hmm. quite, uh, quite refreshing that you sort of said, well, actually, this is how we really want to do it. And therefore we need more people to do it like this, yep. which is mm -hmm. actually not, not the normal way of doing it. So that's, so that's, yeah. that's, a, that, that's, a, that's a good one. I, I like that. The, um, <laughs> what would you do differently now, now that you know what you know? <laughs> now I know what I know I would say that from the very beginning of doing these um, taking over the businesses from the rest of the local market standardization should have happened sooner um, yeah. I don't th I think it's a lesson learned to the business and going forward obviously we have that process in place but standardization for me should have been done from the very beginning yeah, because you said that you 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 ended up picking it up, moving it in, and then standardising yeah. it rather mm -hmm. than doing it the other way around, which is yeah. the traditional way of doing it. Was that because there was a degree of urgency to do it, and you just got forced into doing it like that, or was it um, a conscious decision? A bit, a bit of both, I think, because the SSC was very very new. Um, the lift and shift approach was just the, the way that the business did it. Um, right. But obviously, as we got more established and we understood what was happening and why we needed to do it differently, you know definitely if if i was to move in another business for for an example and they said we're going to do lift and shift i would say no 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 please don't do it like that <laughs> let's yeah. let's have a look at what's yeah. needed first let's let's get our design our processes of what the 2b should be and then let's move it on to the 2b process let's try and do it like that it's not always yeah. that straightforward um no. you know we have a lot of complexity with the Euro european businesses we have different um you know needs from different areas and different legislations but yeah, I would, I would like to do it as a more standardised approach, and that would be my yeah, last Yeah, fix, fix and shift, I think they call it. 
Mm-hmm. Is that, yeah, that's it. It's gen- that's generally a be- better outcome, but because it just takes longer to do it, as you as you yeah. clearly found out. Um, so you've got you've got Sorala in for your auto allocation. What's your percentage mm-hmm. auto, auto allocation now? Um, at the moment, it's about sixty five percent. We good. yeah, we're looking to get to eighty percent. But the reason why we haven't got there yet, it's because of the information feeding into the system from the customers. Yeah. So you know, partial payments due to queries that we're not aware of. Um paying incorrect bank accounts again because the customers have had so much change we have put all of our banking onto the ing for example from all different banks across europe so the customers maybe haven't put that information onto their system so they're paying closed bank accounts or they're paying the wrong bank accounts or they're paying we have so many different currencies that we bill in and the customers have invoices in all different currencies so it's just having an education process really there isn't there with the customers to make sure that they're doing the right thing for you it to is. Get, it's to get ongoing. your percentages up, basically. So yeah, how long? Has, how long has Sorana been in there? Since we started, um, so we've had it for the Swiss entity since I started in 2016, oh, okay. and then well, last then. year we implemented it for another four countries. So it's working very well. So right. The GB mm. market, um, Netherlands, Germany, and um, one other. So we've we've implemented it for, for four others. It's it, it's working well, but again, it's the information feeding that we just need to we just need to improve that, and then hopefully we'll get our target is eighty percent. Right. So hopefully so, we'll so get we, there. we don't have we don't have any vendors on the call here, so you're safe, right? <laughs> um, uh, so um, so my, my, next, my next question is um, is what, what are you th- you've got the technology for the back end, right? Um, mm-hmm. what, what are you looking? Are you looking at some technology for collections and for the for the credit management piece as well? We are, yes. We've actually been working with Sorella for credit right. and collections as well. Um, okay. So we're looking to implement that at some point. We just needed to make sure that we had our standardized processes live for everyone, yeah. for everywhere first, and then we're going to look to automate. So we are in the process of looking at doing that, yep. Right, okay. So your engine your, your engine is SAP, is it? It is, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because Sorella, they, 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 do, they do map into SAP quite well, don't they? Mm-hmm. so that, that, that's it right okay. it's just that because Lonzo is quite a complex business <laughs> yeah um, and we have quite a lot of exceptions for different areas it's automation is something that we want to do but we just need to make sure that we've got the right processes yeah. in yeah. and, and, and it's, it's understand as as we say in, in, in these calls it's understanding what the predictable outcome is and if you've got lots of predictable outcomes it's much more, more difficult to automate it right so yeah, yeah. You, yeah, so you you've got to try and get get the predictable outcomes down. So so you you, you talked about um um looking at the automation and uh, and auto allocation and getting all of the stuff fixed up fixed so that you can you you can automate it. Do you have do you have like um uh, at, at the front end do do you have sort of controls around order acceptance and things like that 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 are matching so that you can measure how 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 accurate the orders are and how um, better is etc. Through the process. It's something that we're working on at the moment. So um, we do have an operational excellence lead for um, invoice to cash. Order to invoice is something that we're looking at doing next. Um, The main focus of the business for the last six months to a year is obviously the LSI, the sale of the business. So that's just gone through. Um, And now we are just focusing on the Lonza side, not the other half of the business. We are looking at having more of a standardized approach to that side as well because you know we're the we're the, the end of the process so mm. we do have a lot of frustrations with you know certain processes not being standardized across all of the different countries uh, but that is the next focus point yes so we do have a global process owner who looks after the whole order to cash function but what we need is dedicated people in the order to invoice function to make sure that that is now standardized so that's going to be the next step Yes. Yeah. Um, so Candice yeah. and I have a lot of, of, uh, of feedback for that and a lot of um, input into what we feel would work. Uh, for example, we've just uh, introduced a billing team in the shared service center as well. So they're in the process of migrating all of the local invoice uh, billing processes into the SSC. And even the new billing man- manager has said, you know, this could be improved and we can do this. And we've been working very closely with her to Again, rollout training, purchase order compliance is one thing. Having purchase orders on invoice, very standard thing, but it's not a standardized approach across all yeah. the different areas that yeah. raise invoices. So that's just one example of another improvement that we're making. 
Yeah, there was, a, there was something that I, I, I picked up. I'm, I'm doing some work with another client at the moment. And one of the things that, that we're looking at there is, is are the, the, the three lines of defense. Yeah, in terms of in terms of controls, the first mm -hmm. line being operational right at the very beginning with the sales guy and then being able to measure that. So then you can sort of point and say, well, this is an error over here because Candice has picked it up in collections and all this all this mm -hmm. sort of root cause stuff. And then you feed that back into yep. into the front line which then enables you to sort of determine which of the controls you need to do first mm -hmm. right um and and also then then you should start measuring it and i'm, I'm glad that you're pulling that you're pulling billing in and billing is a real uh, thing of mine um yeah. and, and not not least because you know it, it's driving whatever candice is doing from a collections perspective um when you're looking at Definitely. billing accuracy yeah, and that's why, again, on one of the previous slides, that's why we, again, standardise the dispute management process and yes. the information that we're feeding back to the business. So it's yeah. not just what's gone wrong, it's what is needed to fix it, what the feedback is. And even we give input into, well, if you did this going forward or if you adapted this process, this would be a lot easier. And mm. again, purchase order compliance, going back to that again, that's the one of the, the main key things that we've we've started with because it's our biggest reason for late payments. Uh, you know, I yeah. think Candy in an average you must deal a lot with you must deal a lot with uh, NHS trusts and stuff like that, right? Uh, we do for one part of the business, yes, but that's yeah. that's more higher. Um, <clears throat> it's lower amounts, but higher volume. Um, yeah. Our main value is in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, but we have a lot of challenges in regards to some of these companies are you could just have two guys in an office in you know the middle of America who's built this you know this amazing drug but they don't have dedicated finance departments to, to ask for purchase orders you know that it's it's just not a standard approach so yeah we are trying to get to that state of play but it's just not going to work for everybody mm -hmm. but we're, we're mm -hmm. starting with the you know the, the hot ticket items and then going from there yeah yeah that's interesting because yeah the, the whole the whole billing accuracy piece and the disputes and, and that, that is mm -hmm. uh, is really um I'm, I'm seeing it with uh, with lots of lots of organizations that i'm working with at the moment and, and the po the po point that you make um uh, we're, we're doing some work with the accounts payable community as well and of course the po is ex is the exact same on the other side of the, the coin you know they're not paying stuff because there's no PO on it. Um, and, and it's surprising the sheer volume of organizations that don't have that PO process nailed down. Yeah, and it, and it usually sits at the front end with the order and the first line of defense in terms of controls that you need to put in place. So it's, it is, it's, it's, it's interesting stuff. Um, so you, you, you talked about rem working remotely and supporting the teams and stuff like that, and you're having a re regular sessions. So you're, you're kind of not at the moment, from what you said earlier, you're, you're, you're still sort of pending going back to the office now. Um, is that, is that what, where, where, are, where is Lonza with that now? Um, so we're going to be start phasing our staff back into the office from the second week of September. So we're going to do one day, then two days, then build up to three days. We're not right. going to be back to the three days until I think January, February next year. Um, so we're going to have, so we, we've gone from a 120 capacity office to I think 85 capacity office. So right. that's why we've got the three, two, and also we're not going to be having full team. So AR and the billing team, as an example, will work one day, but you won't have R to R AP and on the same day. Um, so my team will work, will choose the days, the three days that they want to work, but then one day a week, we'll have the full AR team in together along Cross with over, billing. Yeah. yeah, so we're going to try and do it like that. I think it's important. We wanted AR and billing to be in together because of the amount of process changes yeah, that we're making. So, you know, just to have those brainstorming sessions and we've got some fantastic areas in the new office that we can all sit in together. Um, you know, we've so this got is the Gazprom office you spoke of yeah yeah it's it's fantastic so i went there for a nice. meeting a couple of weeks ago and just the the space for team team building exercises is great and that's what that's what we need so um they'd really listen to what we would like it's very open you know we've got all new desks with a lot more space um so they've really listened to what what we need and what we would like and they've, they've well that's you know, great because you've got you've got gazprom who are uh, obviously we are um very connected to gazprom not least with all and and uh, sharon nolan and stuff in this all in the same building mm -hmm. so uh, that that would be a, a, an opportunity as well for you guys to um to, to network between the two, yeah, two buildings and share experiences you're not in the same industry so it's, it, it should be mm -hmm. fine let me just um stop sharing there so has um has anybody whilst we're on here has anybody got any questions um that, that you would want to ask um dion or, or candice um while, while we're on and then i'll i'll stop the recording piece if there's if there aren't any 
I've got loads, but I, it would be rude for me to ask all of them. We'd run out of time. So I might have to, I might have to ask for your contact details. Dion. Okay. <laughs> but I, if I could ask a couple, that would be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just a thought on, obviously, you chose to have the shared service centre in Manchester. I was just wondering, where any other locations did you look at? Or was it because you already had a presence there? So you kind of thought, we'll build on that. No, they didn't. So the reason why they chose Manchester was because of the universities and the close yeah. network links. Um, I think there was one other location. I can't remember where it was because this is going back to 2000. This obviously is before I started. But I know that the main reasons why they chose Manchester was because of, you know, the great education and the, the universities um, in the area and all of the network links. So that's why they chose Manchester. And okay. you live there, don't you, Dion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Manchester, born and bred. Yeah. Cool. Thank what, you. What um, else that, Lisa, you got something else? Uh, all sorts. I'm just going to pick one. Um, so, just looking at your sort of numbers of staff, so there's about I saw there's about you've got about two and a half thousand sort of client accounts, um, mm -hmm. over five hundred million. Um, do you? Is anything you're talking about systems at the moment for collection? So you're looking at Sarala for that. But mm -hmm. in the meantime, do, is anything of the Dunning like automated, or yeah. do you find that your team do predominantly email I mean things have changed a lot in the last year and a half obviously yeah. um or as a telephone because that's obviously not a great deal of people to be getting around all the clients so I wondered sort of how many just sort of pay and, and how many do you have a high level of sort of non-payers and disputes um, we do have certain customers that tend to pay on time. So, you know, a, a lot of my staff have been here for quite a long time, which is great. So they know their customers very well. Um, we have built in a lot of autom automation through SAP over the last two, two and a half years. So our statements are automated. Our dunning is automated. Um, okay. We yeah. have... Yeah. Yeah, we have automated. Uh, so we have macros for our collections reports until we go into uh, an automated system. We have macros for our periodic credit reviews. Basically, anything that's Excel reporting based, we've now gone on to the macro side of things to, to minimize the amount of manual intervention until we get to the point where we do have an automated system. Um, yeah. So Candice and I, you know, through the standardization program, you know, we just literally picked at everything. You know, how many steps, how many buttons do you have to press to do this? Okay, we don't want to do that anymore because we want to make sure that our team are focusing on proactive collections and proactive activities rather than manual processing. So we've tried to minimize the amount of manual intervention. Absolutely. Would you mind me asking, what was it, the decision to go with Sarala? I know that was a while back, but um, I'm guessing there would have been a long list of vendors that you looked at at the time. I was just wondering why, mm -hmm. why them? Um, so we chose Sorella um, because obviously we already have them um, for the mm -hmm. cash application piece. We did have a yeah. look at a couple of other uh, vendors. There were certain reasons why we couldn't go with certain ones, which I won't I won't be able to go into too much detail on. Um, but mm -hmm. for Especially being as we are recording to... at the moment. Yeah. So <laughs> the, the system, for the the Q and A session that we had in the beginning, and you know our needs. So we went with them because everything that we asked them for, they said, yes, we could do this. And yes, that could be built. Right. Um, um, a couple of other systems didn't have as much. Okay. We'll carry, we'll carry on afterwards. What I'll do is I'll, I'll stop the recording there and then we can have a more open conversation about this. It uh -huh. might, might be a better idea. So, um, so, um, and before, before we stop there, thanks very much indeed, Dion. Thanks very much for Candice for Welcome. being on and everybody else. So this session will be, um, re is, is recorded and it will be put onto the um, CICM's uh, YouTube channel. Um, early part of next week and there'll be notes out on social media to say that that's what's happening so I'm just going to stop recording now and we'll carry on talking afterwards so thanks everybody for joining.